Now Five Below is a great place if you want to go in there and get a couple things for super cheap, but is it the spot for gaming accessories? Let's find out. I went to Five Below the other day and got a bunch of stuff. All right, let's start off with the first item, a thing that every gaming setup needs, a desk mat. So this is the Mario Kart desk mat, and right here it shows what the actual desk mat supposed to look like. The bottom has all the different kart racers. It looks like these might be inspired from maybe like the Super Nintendo era, but it's more like cartoony and not like the old pixel art style. It has the different like seals from the different circuits that you can do in Mario Kart. So let's check it out. I do already have a desk mat. It's just a plain black one that I got off Amazon from a long time ago. It's actually a little bit bigger than this one, but uh, let's check out this one and see how, see how it is. All right, this actually feels kind of nice. It's got a nice rubber bottom, so it would stick to your desk. Look at that. It's actually, you know, it's actually a lot bigger than I expected. <laughs> it's actually kind of nice. I might actually replace the, the my my black desk mat with this one. I apologize if my keyboard and my mouse are a little bit dirty. I need to clean them. You know what? It fits the keyboard and mouse just fine. I move my keyboard around. That rubberized bottom isn't really doing its job. That mat is moving around a lot, so it's pretty easy to move. It's not going to stay put. So I probably will keep on using my original desk mat because that one, once you put it down, it doesn't slide around when you try to move it. I'll keep this down here for the rest of this video at least. Move it over so you can kind of be more centered. All right, now that we got the desk mat down, I have the next item here, and that's the Spider-Man Miles Morales themed Nintendo Switch case. Uh, nothing special on the back. You'll see it actually shows what you could put in there. So it looks like just kind of like a small area with a little couple straps for the Switch itself, then a larger mesh area on the top for some accessories. But it looks like no flap for the Switch game to go into. I have a case from TomTalk that does have that soft flap that covers the screen and protects it. And you can also put some games in there, probably up to like eight games or so. But this doesn't look like it has anything like that in it. So let's, uh, let's take it out and check out the inside. All right, and yeah, exactly as advertised. The bottom area has these nice little straps that will hold the switch in place, even if you accidentally tip it upside down. Then you have the top area that has this nice kind of mesh spot for accessories or headphones joy cons it looks like you could fit probably a few sets of joy cons in here but probably not the pro controller and you know what let's let's test that out. i got my pro controller right here and we'll you know i can already tell this is not really gonna work and yeah that's not even you know what uh it's like really close <laughs> <laughs> if, uh, if this was just a, a few millimeters larger, the Pro Controller would fit in there, but you wouldn't be able to also fit a Switch alongside it. Um, but let's see what the Switch looks like in there. Reach in there, grab that without smashing my face against this microphone. All right, then you kind of have to slide it on in. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of nice. You know, got the little elastics. <laughs> That's... That's the real test there, the switch stays in there, which is kind of nice. And then get some other joy cons or, you know, I actually have, I actually have this, which I bought from Amazon, which you can put all your games in there. Of course, I have two weird spots that are empty of letting someone borrow a game and my game is in the switch. So you could probably fit this right up here. Wow, this is actually really nice. It's kind of like a, it's not like a hard outside case. It's, it's like a plastic. But it's, it's still kind of like squishy, so it's not like it's going to be super protective. So if you like, like drop this from a distance or like if a car ran over, it really wouldn't protect stuff like that. But it looks like it would probably protect it from a little bit of splashing water or like if you put it in a bag, it'll it'll be just fine in there. Other than that, I mean, this is just like five bucks. I think they kind of raised everything to be five fifty five because, you know, even five below can't escape inflation. So this is actually a pretty nice product. So I'll put this over to the side and we'll... We'll check out the next one. Okay, we have the, I don't know how to pronounce that, use? <laughs> the use color changing LED gaming mouse. Multicolor cycle, 1200 DPI, ergonomic design. Jeez, okay. All right, so let's check out what's uh, what's in there. So we got a sticker. If you've seen my unboxing of the Pixel Watch, this watch right here, you'll know that I hate stickers on boxes like this. I know you could easily get like a, a knife or like a box cutter and just kind of zip right through it, but it's not always handy and it's really annoying, but the, the box or the Pixel Watch had little tabs that you just rip and that was just totally perfect. But I totally get it. It's not something you can really engineer for a product that you're selling this cheap. 
So right off the bat, that's it. That's all you get in the box is the mouse. That's it. Again, the wired mouse. It actually looks really cool. This reminds me of really any of the gaming mice out there, like the Logitech ones or like the Razer ones, but it feels terrible. <laughs> I'm not even I'm not even like a PC gamer or like someone who uses a mouse keyboard for gaming, but this definitely feels like they made a ton of profit even after selling it for $5.55. So let's plug it into the computer and you know, let's see how it is. All right, and we are back. So I just had to plug the mouse into my computer. It's the computer mounted behind the monitor. So it just took me an extra couple of seconds to get behind there and plug it in. But, but here it is. Um, like I said, it's nothing special. It's kind of like a cheap plastic. So if your gaming setup has a lot of green in it or a lot of red in it and you have like a kind of like a color scheme going on, this really wouldn't be the mouse for you because it just cycles through these colors slowly and you have no options for picking that color. Otherwise, it's not a terrible mouse. It makes kind of a satisfying click sound if you even hear that in the microphone. This scroll wheel here, some, some nice ASMR for you. Scroll wheel click has a very satisfying sound. And you know, it. I mean, it works for a USB mouse. You know, if you need a USB mouse for like a second mouse in case something goes wrong with yours, let's say if you have a wireless mouse and like, the battery dies or you know, I'm an extra, like if you use double A's, you know, I'm extra double A's to throw in there. This would be kind of a cool extra thing to have, but I definitely wouldn't pick this as your main mouse. Moving around my screen, I know you can't see it, but moving around my screen, it I mean, it works fine. If you're really in the market for a gaming mouse, I couldn't really recommend this. And there's a lot of brands that make a lot of great gaming mice that are really affordable. I would definitely just save up some money and, and buy one of those. All right, now that we've checked out a gaming mouse with a gaming pad, what else do we need? A microphone. If you don't already have a microphone like this one, if you need a microphone for your gaming sessions, I have one right here for you. It's the Unlocked LED Light Up Gaming Microphone. Now this microphone, pretty much like everything else here, was $5.55, so I'm really not expecting the quality of this one to be really all that good, but you know what, let's check it out. All right, let's see what's in the box here. Again, another sticker. I really should have gone through all of these already and just kind of cut out all the stickers so I can just get right in there, but you know, I'm silly and I do weird things sometimes, like not prepare for stuff like this. All right, let's see here. Okay, that's all that was in the box. This looks like a stand. Yeah, this looks like a stand with a little kind of thread in here. So you like screw it into the stand. St kind of cheap. I mean, it's $5.55, so I really, I'm not shocked, but it is does feel kind of cheap. Um, an instruction manual? I would hope all you would have to do is plug in. Oh, instruction manual for like how to connect all the parts. That makes sense. Okay, so we got a few different things here. So we have, oh, interesting. So if you're plugging this into headphone jack on the computer, this little adapter will give you a little headphone symbol on here and a little microphone symbol in here. So you would plug the microphone into here and then your headphones into here. And that would probably give you like monitoring for your headphones. So when you speak into the microphone, you could hear it immediately. I am not gonna do that because of reasons. Let's get this all set up and we'll, <laughs> we'll hear what it sounds like. All right, so I moved my microphone over there, turned it off, and replaced it with this one from Five Below that costs five fifty-five. And this is how it sounds. I can't hear back from it because I don't have my headphones plugged into it, but I will listen to it afterwards to see how it sounds. Um, this is how it sounds closer to my face. Before it was more so about a foot away or a little bit more than that. Now it's a few inches away from my mouth. And as you can see, it does have RGB. I'll put it in the, the top down camera. It does have RGB and that's powered by a USB cable. So you plug the USB cable in for the RGB and then it has like a three and a half millimeter headphone jack that you plug in the computer and that was that's where the microphone actually transfers through. So this is how this sounds. I'll transfer back to my regular microphone in a second and I'll let you know what I think about it. doesn't sound too great. You get what you get for $5.55. I mean, if you have something like a laptop or a phone, that's got a much, much better microphone in it. That would be a much better experience than what you're getting for this microphone. So definitely do not recommend this microphone for $5.55. All right, I actually have one more item for you. And this one is kind of a weird one because it's sort of a keyboard, sort of not. It's actually a gaming keyboard that's branded by a professional streamer. And this one was actually $10, which is super weird, right? Five below should be anything $5 and, and below, but for whatever reason, they are selling some things at a higher price. You know, hopefully it's good. We'll, we'll take it out of the box and check it out. Right, and this box has more tape. So I'm just gonna destroy the box because you can't return any of these. That's the other thing. 
If you buy anything from Five Below, the return policy is essentially uh, don't. <laughs> don't return it. You, they won't let you. All right, and this is this pretty much the same as all the other stuff. You don't really get a lot in the box. You get some paperwork, you get some packing material, and then the device itself. So throw that to the side. And here it is. This is the one-handed gaming keyboard. And the point of something like this pretty much has all the buttons that you would use when you play a PC game, but it's in a smaller form factor. So you can make this more ergonomic. So instead of having it like tight like this and you get carpal tunnel and it's terrible and needs <laughs> surgery and all that, you can move it to, the, to like an angle like this and you can more comfortably put your hand on it and and play it's a little awkward having to type like this at an angle but you know once you get used to it it's probably not a big deal i think my problem is that the f key doesn't have the little tab on it that a normal keyboard does for like the home row because it's i mean it's not really designed for you to be using it as a standard keyboard it's really designed for you to be using it just for gaming but not having that tab there just feels really weird it just makes the whole experience awkward yeah and this definitely feels like a cheap membrane keyboard kind of thing you know what let's let's plug it in and test that out anyway all right here we go so you know what at this point i really should have plugged in both this keyboard and the gaming mouse but <laughs> Kind of sad to say, I only have one open USB port for plugging in things to test it out, so I couldn't plug both of them in. We'll just use my regular mouse for this. Right after I plugged it in on my computer, it says, your device cannot be identified and will not be usable as a keyboard until identified. And when you plug in a keyboard on a Mac, it will make you press certain keys on the keyboard and then it will basically set it up with the appropriate keyboard layout. The way it works is it says, first step is you have to press the key to the right of the left shift and then press the key to the left of the right shift, which I inherently do not have because that's just how this is supposed to be. You're not supposed to have the other part of the keyboard. Yeah, I'm just gonna quit out of that. Let's, you know what, let's see if I open up a notepad app see if it will still type and you know you know actually it does it still types it's just the computer can't really detect uh, what kind of keyboard it is if you have a mac or a pc and you want something cool like this i mean this is 10 bucks if this will help make it a little bit easier on you for playing pc games i'd recommend it they probably sell something like this actually no they do sell something like this it's a bit more pricey but probably way more ergonomic and probably way nicer but it's got some rgb which it kind of looks like it just segmented off areas for different colors and that's really yeah, you don't really get any kind of control with that but hey for 10 bucks not bad all right and that was everything that i had in my five below haul and normally i would put some links in the description below for items that i've shown off in a video but with five below you can't really buy these things online you have to go into a store to pick them up so if you do have a five below near you and you're really interested in any of these things just head on down there and pick them up most of them were 555 there was that one item at the end that was 10 bucks but not a bad deal for really any of those things if you really like that video and you want to see more like it go ahead and click on here to subscribe Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.